Today I'll be explaining to you guys how ostracism, this word, because I can't seem to pronounce it, social loafing, social facilitation, and group decision making helps or hurts the influence of groups, and also how this affects the people inside the group and the unity of a group. The first term I'll be explaining is ostracism, which is ignoring other people's feelings, thoughts, and overall well-beings. The cause of ostracism is people being forgotten about or not even given any attention to by their peers. These people's main desire is to belong in a group or belong to a group. If they can't find one or if they've been kicked out of one, then their personality or behavior will change. Their behaviors can change by the way they talk to people, making themselves more socially acceptable. This leads to these ostracized people becoming more susceptible to persuasion or more easily persuaded. There have also been violent changes to people's behaviors which have led to murder or school shootings because people are cast aside by society or their classmates. The ambiguation, I think that's how you say it. I've been practicing a little bit, but this is when people get lost in the crowd. It occurs when being in groups tends to cause people to become less aware of themselves and how people view them. I'm just going to call this being lost in the crowd. Well, being lost in the crowd is very common. For example, student sections at high schools like mine, people become more anonymous or more aroused to trouble because of the size of the crowds. Unnecessary things will be said, people's actions will be turned up a notch because they know they're not going to get in trouble personally. Maybe the whole group but not personally. The most well-known or notorious event of being lost in the crowd happened at an event called Woodstock 99. Woodstock 99 was a musical event that held over 200,000 plus people that stayed in a fenced area for over three days and three nights to listen to their favorite bands and artists play. Alcohol was consumed, drugs were taken, and chaos assumed because everybody was getting lost in the crowd of this 200,000 plus people. There was nobody to calm down the situation either. There were three deaths over 1,400 injuries and multiple sexual assault cases because people got lost in the crowd. People didn't take accountability for their actions, so all this happened. Next is social loafing or not giving your all or pulling your weight. This especially happens in groups like school projects when people tend to not work as hard in a group as they tend to work as an individual because they know people will pick up their slack once they slack which is basically lack of motivation. Karu and Williams explain that there are three causes to social loathing. Collective effort is when people tend to get lazy if their efforts aren't going to lead to any valued outcomes. People assume that if they're not going to get what they want then they're not going to even try at all. So this tends to people loafing and becoming lazy. Next is free ride. Free ride is very straightforward. Um, people think they can get away with not helping in any group project by benefiting off of the effort of others. The third um, cause is the sucker effect, which bounces off of the free rider effect. For example, if Billy um, sees Joe free riding, instead of calling him out or doing all the work for him, he decides to free ride with Billy. Social facilitation has the opposite effect of loafing. This is when you tend to perform better with people around instead of slacking off on people around. The presence of others tends to boost your performance when you're doing anything. A sports related example of this is practice. You don't perform very well in practice because you don't have the motivation that people's presence brings. So you slack in practice, you go through the motions. But when it comes to game day, you know everybody's watching. So you're motivated to be the best you can be, which makes you perform even better than in practice. Lastly is group decision making, which is probably the easiest thing to remember or learn about. It's basically when a group of people come together and they decide on what to do verbally. For example, like a business meeting or marketing meeting, or you're at the dinner table with your family and you're trying to come up with an idea. It's really easy. I hope you guys find these terms useful or at least recognize the terms because I certainly did the Woodstock 99 one because you see these terms in everyday life. So thank you guys for watching.